Hello, my name is Laura Jensen, and I'm a RISE VT Program Manager for Windsor County. Thank you for joining us for the Rise and Walk Virtual Edition. Rise VT through the Rise and Walk program is encouraging Vermonters to walk 30 minutes three times a week and hosting virtual talks with uh, local professionals. With me today is Dr. Adam Amelie, a clinical psychologist who's the Director of Behavioral Health at Springfield Medical Care Systems. Thank you, Dr. Amelie, for joining us today. I know you're a busy clinician. Um, we'd like to ask you about um, stress and anxiety and the effects of um, that on emotional and physical health. Can you talk to us about that? Yeah, I'd be happy to. And again, uh, thank you for uh, allowing me the opportunity to connect with folks uh, um, and share uh, what I can. And hopefully that it, uh, it helps them in some way, shape or form. So, you know, stress, anxiety, um, the question regarding stress and anxiety impacting our health. Um, first, it's important that we think about what, what does the word stress mean? Um, and that's that's a word that we often, and anxiety as well, those are two words we hear in, on a daily basis and they're tossed around fairly easily. Um, when we look at just the, uh, the definition of something, the word stress, stress is, uh, you know, an increased demand, both and or physical and or emotional uh, on our body, right? And in acute periods of time, um, our body's stress response helps us survive uh, change and adapt to change in our environment, right? And um, stress can range in terms of intensity, um, but stress uh, is placed on our body with something as small as a change in your daily routine or having to uh, stress your body to get up and go uh, make yourself breakfast in the morning and, and or you're at work and your uh, supervisor provides you with a new task. Or, uh, for example, someone's asked you to talk uh, in front of a camera and that's a stress on your body. The, um, the stress response happens in your body when um, blood flow and oxygen get uh, redistributed throughout your body and your brain um, to help you to the, the, the necessary muscle groups and organs to help you survive in that moment and adapt to change. Um, that's on a, a short term basis. And that's uh, what we all kind of learned in high school science and, and biology and health around what we call our fight, flight, or freeze response. You know, and the, the, the classic example being that if we stepped outside and we saw a bear, uh, that would be our body would perceive that as a stress, right? And that fight, flight, or freeze response would be triggered. It would be automatic. And we'd have blood flow or oxygen redistributed throughout our body to help us survive that moment, right? Um, that's, that's our remarkable human body and brain's adapt, ability to adapt to change and survive over time and allows us to live where we live and how far we've made it. Um, what our bodies are not meant to do is um, have what we call a prolonged stress response, right? So um, constantly stepping outside and seeing that bear uh, is going to take a, a, a toll on our body because as that stress response is happening, our body is releasing stress hormones like cortisol, adrenaline, among many others. Um, and it's, it, it's, it's meant to help us do what we need to do to survive in that moment. But it's also taking blood flow and oxygen away from other parts of our body that help us survive for the long term, i.e. like our digestive system or things like our metabolic system or our immune system that also needs blood flow and oxygen on a regular basis, right? So when we have a prolonged stress response, we're taking away a resource from one part of our body and putting it in another, kind of the term of robbing Peter to pay Paul, right? So in the short term, it helps us. But in the long term, our body typically can't sustain that and we start to suffer consequences from it, such as you know illnesses, chronic conditions, um, or psychological stress, such as the, you know, prolonged stress, you know, leads to what we call, you know, anxiety disorders, where people find themselves worrying about returning to that stress or the stress that could come um, and not knowing how they're going to handle it. Is there, so you've been practicing for many years, is there um, something that you have found to be most effective for people um, at relieving stress and anxiety that they can do at home? Right. So, you know, we learn from an early age and, and it's, we're regularly reminded of it, you know, in media of, well, there's a lot of value in exercise, um, getting out and doing exercise. And that's the great campaign of Rise VT. And we 100% kind of promote that. Um, but the reality is it's going to be unique for each person. Right. And I ask people to think about um, my rule of threes. 
Um, and when we're talking about how are you going to respond to stress and turn on what we call your relaxation response, which is kind of the counterbalance to your stress response, we want you to be thinking about um, that rule of threes. Is it something, an activity that's going to make me happy when I'm doing, when I think about it? An activity that makes me happy when I'm doing it? And or does it make me happy afterwards, right? And if it is a positive answer to any three of those, great. If it's a positive answer to all three of them, even better. The reason we have that, that rule of threes is we want this to be something that you're going to return to doing and do repeatedly. And humans are pretty adapt adaptive. When there's something they don't like doing, they're going to naturally avoid doing that if they don't have to, right? And exercise is often sometimes a trigger word for people um, because they, you know, have an image in their head or a connotation of they have to go to the gym and sweat profusely, right? So we want, we encourage activity and we want that to be something that makes them happy, whether it's going to the gym, going for a walk, playing cribbage with friends, uh, making a meal, uh, uh, anything that's going to meet that answer those, any of one of those three uh, questions about happiness. And the asterisk next to all of this is, is it going to make you happy um, and healthy in the moment, but also increase likelihood of happiness and healthiness in the long term? Um, and one example we discourage people from, you know, because a quick answer to that might be, well, you know, it would be make me happy right now or in less stress if I went out and had a really unhealthy meal, right? Um, well, that could certainly turn down your stress response, but we also know and research shows us that in the long term, that unhealthy meal is going gonna, is gonna to actually stress our body even more. So, you know, there isn't, unfortunately, there's no one answer that cures all, but we want it to be something that works for each person in terms of making them happy because when we're happy, it's the counterbalance again to that stress response. It turns on our relaxation response. Wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing your expertise with us. Thank you for your time. <laughs>